God will use the foolish things to confound the wise. God can use a man without arms and legs to be his hands and feet, to prove that it's not about Nick. It's not about his ability. It's not about him and his strength and how, how he speaks all around the world and uses his hands greatly as gestures and body language while he gets excited preaching. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. I didn't write my story. Jesus wrote my story. He knew me before the earth began. And I don't know about you, but yeah, it's good to have a job. It's good to have a relationship and get married and have kids. It's good to have that stuff. But until you find Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there will be always something missing. You can't rely on you because you will fail you every single time, just about. I needed Him, not just because of this, but for my heart, for my mind. By the grace of God, He kept me here on earth, even though I tried to commit suicide at age 10. The bullying at my school convinced me that I was a mistake, that I'd never eventuate to anything. Man, what a lie. When you realize it's just the devil, I say just the devil because the devil's nothing compared to Jesus. I was listening to the encouragement my parents were saying, but then listening to the lies at the same time, the lies saying, you're not good enough, Nick, just give up. No, I am wonderfully and fearfully made according to Psalm 139. Oh, Nick, you should just give up. No, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. At age 10, I didn't believe the truth because I wasn't running the race. I wasn't in the right race. The race where it's not just getting things in your life and doing things and having things. What happens after you get married? You think you're the happiest person alive. You need to talk to some married people first. <laughs> Amen? Amen? All right, so then after you get married, and I love my wife, trust me. But if you're not happy single in Jesus, then you're not going to be happy married. Amen? It's not about me. It's not about my ability. It's not anything about that. It's all about Jesus. It's not about what you have or what you don't have or what you wish you had or what you wish you didn't have. It's all about Jesus, that no matter where you are in your life right now, if you ask God to forgive you of your sin and you repent of your sin, God will come into your life, forgive you of your sin. You'll receive His life, His blessings, His life eternal, and His life life's plan for your life not my plan I don't want my plan sometimes we just need to get over ourselves and actually realize that sometimes God actually has a better plan I suggest a plan to God and he doesn't say anything sometimes but we gotta understand that God's ways are higher than ours and thoughts are higher than ours and I showed that video for for the summary of my testimony and I want you to know in your life I don't know what you're going through but God does. If I have Jesus, I have everything I need. Now, does that mean I, I don't have a pair of shoes in my closet just in case he says yes to me? No, I do have a pair, okay? Just in case, okay? I want to be ready. But what we need healing first is in the inside and to hear the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God, when you hear a phone ring, you pick it up. Okay? When you're sometimes dialing into heaven and it feels like he's not picking up, don't hang up on God. He's listening. I hung up on God because I didn't understand his plan. God said through my parents, Nick, God's got a plan for your life. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I have a whole plan in the future. I'm like, no way. There's no race like that. There's no heaven. There's no God. Look at all the pain in the world. If God loved the world, then why is He letting so much pain happen? Later on, you realize in the Bible, God doesn't give us pain, but whatever the enemy tried to use for bad, God turned into good. I can't do anything with my broken pieces, but there's nothing that God cannot do. I've seen pain. I've seen miracles. 
God allows things that we don't understand, but I want you to know if you hold on to Him, He'll hold on to you. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, even when you cannot walk, He'll carry you. When you don't get a miracle, you can still be a miracle. I don't need what the world can give me. I want what Jesus wants to give me. What do you think I rather want? One more person to live forever or have a little bit more money? What do you take with you? Nothing. Nothing. Not your garden, not your car, not your nothing. Just you, your soul. And the encouragement you've planted all around you, hopefully souls to come with you. I can only imagine. Now, don't, don't handcuff me because of my doctrine, but I just like this illustration. Imagine God sees me and he says, well done, my good and faithful servant, welcome home. And then he sort of looks over my shoulder and says, who'd you bring? Amen? I want to run that race, the race that matters, the race that counts. And I'd rather be paralyzed in the arms of Jesus in that race than be the first prize winner and runner in any other race.